Opus to you all! It is Friday! Friday is awesome. Every week I tell you, Friday is the best day in the fucking week. Why? We tend to finish all our work up. I did yesterday. I worked very late to get all the Rogue videos done. Uh, I'm sure you've seen them appearing on the channel. Five videos went up yesterday. So instead of uploading seven as the sub videos were done, I thought I'd leave the sub videos to today. And decided Friday will be essentially streaming day. And it will be from now on. Friday will be the day when I'm pretty much streaming all day. And chilling out with you guys. As such, we began today by doing our daily quests, which are a pain in the ass, as we know. Um, I've started to change my mind on a couple of the daily quests. The cooking stuff, I absolutely adore. I think that's fantastic. I find it really enjoyable. Um, the fishing ones, I also find enjoyable. I don't even mind the cloud serpent ones. The Klaxi, however, and the Golden Lotus, especially the Golden Lotus, needs a huge revamp, I think. Uh, it needs a massive revamp. It's too little rep for too much time. Too little rep for too much time. You don't have to do it. I kind of do. I want the enchants uh, that you get from the August Celestials. And of course you can't get those without doing the Golden Lotus dailies. Uh, which is a huge... It's just a pain in the ass. Again, the reputation system has been changed by Blizzard. We knew this was going to happen. We called it the very first day. Anybody who joined us on the very first day of Mr. Pandaria... We said, this is going to change. It's not good enough. It's not a good system. It needs to change. It really needs to change. And they've changed it twice already. We're not even through the second week of the game. And they've changed it twice. Firstly, allowing us to get gear straight away with our justice points. Now we will get reputation twice as fast on our alts. That's still not enough. It really is not enough. And that's going to get changed. Today is going to be story time based. A couple of announcements before we get there. One is Web Show Weekend. I was forgetful in announcing that. Uh, some of you already knew because you know it goes every two weeks or so. But still... It <clears throat> Am I going to cough? Rescued it. Um... Is Web Show Weekend. We're going to be doing a couple of things. One is your transmogs. Some of you have started emailing me already with lots of transmogs. Awesome. Any of the new funky transmogs you've come up with for Mr. Pandaria, please share them with us and we will go through them at the Web Show and we'll sort of pick a winner. And ultimately, we will start giving prizes away for that. The other thing is pet battles. Pet battles is something I've been keeping my eye on because some of the most hardcore, dedicated, serious raiders I've ever met are completely obsessed by pet battles. Every time they try it, they're like, ooh, this is pretty cool. And more and more people who learn the pet battle system or pick up the ability to do it are being swept into the pet battle system. Fine. That's good. Let's have a tournament. Let's see who can be the very best. Let's see who can do it. We're going to see if we can organize a tournament. It won't be tomorrow. It might be the next web show. But we'll organize a live tournament. We might not even do it at a web show. We'll do it at a different time. Maybe midweek. Something like that. Friday. Some people, most people don't raid on a Friday. And we'll try and commentate over it. We'll have a, an arena. And we'll, again, we'll try and sort some sort of prize out. It might be in game. We'll do something along those lines. So you can have a pet battle competition. Um, I'm not sure how it works cross realm and stuff. It was an idea we came up with in the stream, so relatively before the show. Uh, can we invite people cross realm to our realm? And can they then take part in pet battles? I would assume they can if they're in party, uh, that you can pet battle your friends from cross realms and stuff like that, which means through the variety of real IDs we have access to, we should be able to get you on board uh, if you want to take part. As such, I assume that's how it works. If it doesn't, let me know either in the comments or someone in the live stream. Let me know. Oh, someone in the live stream already has let me know and said, yes, it does in fact work that way. Awesome. So we'll sort something out and we'll have a bit of a pet battle tournament. I couldn't find my Preach Gaming t-shirt, so I'm having to wear a hoodie. I don't like hoodies. Hoodies suck, especially when I'm going to talk for you for a while. Uh, so if any of you do have any more transmogs to send us before tomorrow, or bro fists, I'm going to catch up with all the bro fists tomorrow, uh, get them all up on the wall and stuff. The wall needs updating. Uh, I've got all the ones you've already sent. So if you've already sent it and you're not on the board, don't worry, you will be soon. Uh, we'll get those all up to date and then we'll bang on for the next web show for all the brand new ones. Uh, so if you've got anything to send me, send it to preachgaming at gmail.com before tomorrow night. That's all you need to do. Transmogs or brofists, send them into us. 
We're of course going to be reviewing a lot of Mr. Pandaria stuff, going into a deeper discussion with other gamers, and especially Ghosty, getting his opinion on a lot of things that have gone on. Ghosty was hacked this week, we'll talk about that, what it felt like, and all that kind of stuff. And then we'll just be generally chit-chatting about movies and the usual shit and talking with you guys uh, and just having a laugh doing it so if you want to enjoy a saturday night with us tuning 8 p.m gmt that's greenwich mean time or london time google it what time is it in your world what time is it in your local area just find out 8 p.m eight in the evening your time okay sorted easy the topic for the weekend that i want you to discuss this will be the daily before the uh over the weekend so there's no daily till monday um, the tanking model, has it changed? It seems to have, it seems to have changed. Any of you who are checking World of Logs will have noticed that pretty much eight out of 10 of the top DPSs on every single fight are tanks, mainly Blood DKs and Prop Paladins are the top number one DPS on most of the raid bosses in 25 man. That's right now, we checked it on the live stream. Uh, on some bosses, it's just 10 out of 10 tanks are the top DPS. Recently, Blizzard did post on the forums that they were pretty happy with where tanks were in terms of DPS. They were fine with it. They were actually buffed the other tanks to be closer to what we considered really overpowered, which was the Blood DK. Blood DKs weren't doing a hell of a lot. They were just spamming Blood Boil and doing tremendous DPS. They seem okay with it. They're perfectly happy with that happening in the way it is. Are you happy with it? Are you okay with being a DPSer? I think it really undervalues DPSers who are maybe maximizing their gear and not bringing anywhere near as much to the raid as a tank, obviously. You're not bringing anywhere near as much to the raid as a tank. Tanks are bringing the whole face of the boss. That You know, you can't kill the boss without the tank. Um, and being beat on your DPS, your role is to do damage. The tanks have a different role, yet they're beating you at your role at the same time. How do you feel about that? How do the tanks feel? One concern of mine, I'm not too bothered with tanks doing relatively high DPS in general. I don't think that's an issue. I am worried when they're capable of topping the meters and maybe considering changing how they gear their character in favor of DPS. Once tanks start seeing themselves always at the top of the damage meter, a lot of players will want to stay there. And they will do things to stay there. They will do things like change their gear up. They will wear some DPS items. And even in progression raiding, that can happen. Because they should be a DPS class. Is that wrong? What do you think? Do you think that's wrong? There's a certain argument that says that's not wrong. If your character is capable of outperforming everybody else at damage, and damage is obviously a major part of the encounter, are you wrong to push that to its limit? Are you wrong? I don't know. Is it worth sacrificing avoidance to push that damage? Is it worthwhile the healer's having a harder time in order to get the boss down quicker because your tank is doing so much DPS? We're talking in the hundreds of thousands here uh, that the tanks are doing. What do you think? I really want to know. Leave the comments on the YouTube video over the weekend. Have a think about it. Take your time. We're not going to be talking about it again until Monday. I'll do the whole topic on Monday on the tanking model. Do you feel it's wrong? I don't know. I don't know. Wrong, 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 wrong. Lots of people believe that to be wrong. Um, I'm not sure. It's different. It's different. Uh, we did say it's probably easier to balance bosses around the fact that we would have 19 DPS classes, essentially including the tanks into the flat-out DPS and aiming for everybody to be around the same marker. There's another way of looking at this. Is tank DPS going to increase? It isn't going to increase at the same rate as a DPSer who gets fully geared. Is this just premature worry? In another three or four weeks, once the DPSs start gearing into those slots, are they going to be massively outperforming the tanks and we just won't see the tanks again? This could be just a simple case of premature worry. It could be. But still, seeing the tanks way up in the DPS meters and number one. We're talking about number one in the world, by the way. They beat every other DPS class. Every single one in the world at that boss. That boss's top person to be damaged by was the tanks. Weird. I don't know, I find it pretty strange. I really do. Story time! There was no daily yesterday. Well, in fact, if you're watching this on YouTube and you tend to catch the dailies on YouTube, there was a daily yesterday, but it lasted about 10 minutes. My dog was going insane. I was busy all day. I'd been editing, and then I had to come back and edit, and I also had to visit people for a dinner. Uh, therefore, my time was really everywhere, and Ben needed a walk, so he was barking constantly. So I just chose not to upload it. But it is on the VODs. You can go to Twitch and watch it. It's not very good. 
Your choice. <laughs> if you want to watch it, it's your choice. It's your choice. It's just like whether or not you put Vegemite on your bread. The answer is no. No, you don't. You don't put Vegemite on your bread. It's very bad. Also, there's a couple of guys working on my UI. Uh, there's been some uh, interesting comments coming from people who uh, wanted uh, my UI and are willing to help me. One of the big issues with uploading my UI is I didn't design it. Uh, therefore, the way it works on my system is a little bit unusual compared to other UIs I've seen, in which case I pick profiles from different sources. These guys are going to try and work on it. If so, we'll get the UI uploaded to the website and you guys can go grab my UI. Uh, and you should be happy and stop asking me about the UI. Uh, I would hope you're going to be uh, um, happy with that. Now the discussion begins. Vegemite, yes or no? The answer is no. The answer is no. What story did I want to tell you today? What, how, did I, how far did I want to cast my uh, mind back? I was thinking about this last night as I didn't do a daily and while I was sat listening to trivial conversation over a boring dinner with friends that aren't mine, um, I was busy thinking about my daily. <laughs> you know, I sat and politely ate my food and listened to the boring conversation uh, about horses and shit that I really don't care about. Uh, and I thought about the daily. And I thought, what can I... Um, what can I talk about on this story? I kind of figured that in story time number two, I told you about me being an elitist asshole. In story time number one, I told you about how I met Ghost. Um, but there are factors that lead to that. How does one become an elitist asshole? And that's something I didn't go into, which is there are factors involved which led me to become a real arrogant prick um, in the game uh, and in RL as well. And those factors were numerous and tiny the little pushes you often find in movies they do some innocuously dramatic qu uh, quotes such as it's the little pushes that people need for some reason when i said that uh the keanu reeves movie constantine came into my head we're not allowed to get directly involved but we give you a little push in the right direction and something really um, weird and reactive and dangerous can come out of it just a little push can turn a normal man into a murderer not that I killed anybody. Uh, but it's like, um, I started thinking about things that may have happened to me that sort of aided in me becoming that and maybe things that are happening to you and you're starting to think too highly of oneself, which is really dangerous, right? That's fucking scary. If someone's really arrogant, it just everybody around you hates you. Uh, and maybe you're doing these things to other people and maybe that's a little bit scary. The first time I ever met someone who was a true elitist, I mean the elitist, was a priest um, in a Strathholm run, a Strathholm 10-man run. So we're in vanilla, right? We're back in vanilla, we're casting our minds back, we're in vanilla. I'm on my priest. Of course, in a 10-man run, you brought more than one healer. And a priest joined the group. And this priest came into the group and was wearing the full prophecy set. Oh shit! Full tier one. Holy fucking Jesus. Um, next level, I know. <laughs> Crazy shit. Um, was from what was considered to be the best guild on the server. At the time, I was playing my dwarf warrior. My first ever character was a dwarf warrior. I chose it because I loved the look of the dwarf um, on the loading screen. That was the only reason I chose it. And I was tanking. I was tanking. I wasn't on my priest. I was on my warrior. It was before I'd made my priest. So I was on my warrior, my dwarf warrior. I think it was probably around level 58 at the time. About level 58, which was fine for a 10-man run. You were covered by the lack of levels. And it was... Um, this guy came into the dungeon and I was awestruck. Absolutely awestruck at how his character looked. Mine looked retarded. Mine looked so stupid. I was wearing like the most idiot clown suit ever. Um, I still thought my dwarf looked badass on the loading screen in front of because you get the picture in front of Ironforge, don't you? If you dwarf, and they give me that angle where dwarves don't look really stupid and small. I always thought my dwarf was really cool. I seriously regret to this day deleting that character. If you have any reasonably high level characters, don't delete them. There's no point unless you've filled every slot, which is very unlikely. Um, and I really regret deleting that character. He had some cool things like uh, Dahl Ren's uh, pole arm. <laughs> I can't remember the name now. Ren's. Doomsaw? Is it called the Doomsaw? Some people cast their mind back. Was it the fucking Doomsaw? Uh, Strat wasn't five man's always. You could raid them. Noob. Um, yeah, I think it was the Blackhand's Doomsaw. I think it was Blackhand's Doomsaw. Um, 
and I loved I thought it was badass anyway I was tanking this dungeon this priest joined and he came into the dungeon and I looked at him with just absolute awe because gear was everything then gear was everything maybe it still is to this day and I just don't notice it enough but gear was everything and somebody wearing full tier 1 had to be the best of the best players in the world so the majority of the player base they just were like gods among men walking amongst us and you would very rarely see them very rarely see them they would always be out doing something all the raiders would be off doing something occasionally you bump into them outside ironforge uh, dueling or whatever and just smashing people to pieces uh, wearing all this obnoxiously bad gear <laughs> the prophecy set was terrible it was absolutely fucking terrible and uh, we were rocking and rolling and i just remember this guy didn't speak and he could easily heal me with just renew um, and I was tanking and he was like go faster and I was a terrible tank really bad I wasn't even protection spec or anything uh, I was just like an arms warrior pressing sunder armor and revenge every now and again and trying, trying to just taunt my way through the dungeon just praying to god nobody died until my taunt came off cooldown again and you remember you had to be in melee range to taunt so I was just running around like a dwarven asshole I was just the run of the fucking group um, this guy was mocking me calling me names and started just saying go faster hold aggro and he, you could tell it was all the dots like we talked about in emails you know all the fucking dots uh it was all that kind of shit going on and I, I was trying my hardest and because of this guy's gear i truly felt like um the worst player in the game absolutely the worst player in the game um i i didn't have any uh real friends on the server at that time my good friends like Genji and so on were on the US servers. In fact, most of the clan I played with in previous MMOs were in fact American. They were American guys and therefore they weren't on our server. So I joined a server with my brother. My brother played there. I thought he would help me. Didn't. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, my, and Booster and all this. But they played at different times. They played into the middle of the night. I tried to play during the evenings and things. And I didn't get much help. And... Probably to the point is none of them really knew how to tank either. So me going, hey, how do you tank? It was just pointless. It was absolutely pointless. So I was trying my best. I certainly felt an inkling that I wanted to tank at that time. I felt very much happy when I did hold aggro uh, eventually. And, you know, on the odd time that I held aggro on one mob, uh, I certainly felt very, very impressed with myself. And ultimately this priest just really mocked me and berated me which was a horrible experience it was just before i quit the game for the first time i quit the game because i couldn't get into a raid guild i have a really itchy nose sorry um i quit the game shortly after i couldn't get into any raids because i didn't have fire this was the only thing that really signaled it for me is i geared up as much as i could uh, which was chasing blues doing ubrs 15 man uh, Strat and Sholomans and just getting into as many groups as possible just to try and get some items and these were blues but the guild I was in was actually a raiding guild that was what my brother was a member of he was a mage in a raiding guild and they were doing molten core badly they weren't finishing it um, it was really hard stuff back then I remember and they had a million warriors they had a million warriors and they kept saying have you got fire resist and I was like no where do you get it molten core um, <laughs> excuse me one second <clears throat> nothing happened um <clears throat> so i couldn't i felt like i couldn't progress and then i met this priest from a good guild and obviously his opinion counts right he's wearing full prophecy for christ's sake he must be awesome uh, and he berated me endlessly saying you're terrible you're really bad you're just the worst tank ever uh, and if he wasn't there then pretty much you know you wouldn't have been able to do this dungeon um, and I felt terrible, lousy. Nobody seemed to be helping me, which they weren't. Nobody was helping me at all. And it was before I was of the opinion that... I was, remember I was young. I was, what, 16, 17? So I was still of the opinion that um, help should be given. I, should, I expected help. I expected to get everything. If, you, if I needed fire resist, they should be giving it to me. That's my opinion. Oh, I need fire resist? Fine. Give me fire resist. You're not giving me fire resist? Oh, well. How dare you even request such actions? How dare you? I'm Mike, for Christ's sake. Uh, and I was called Preach back then as well, I think. Or Reverend, maybe. And <coughs> it didn't go very far, and I couldn't get anything done. 
I felt there was no end game in World of Warcraft, which in vanilla was a complete lie. There was so much to do. I just I felt so lost in the game, and I'm down, low, and I just wanted to quit the game. My old friends were still playing the other MMO we were playing. I'd enjoyed the leveling, although we had to grind it then to cap, and it, I just felt so low. A lot. Of, I get a lot of emails from people who are in the same situation. They get told they're bad, they can't get into raiding, they can't get into PvP, they just feel lost, and they end up in a circle of running heroics and LFR, and that's their week, that's their World of Warcraft life, is logging in, doing some LFR, doing some heroics, and we can't get any further than that. And people calling us bad, terrible, especially somebody who should be of a high authority, so much worse when someone who is clearly in a better situation than you calls you bad. And you're like, oh, God, this is terrible. Um, I didn't have a great time at all. I just spent most of my time in Ogrimmar trying to get in the UBRS group. Sorry, full-on warriors. Okay. In other words, you're a warrior and you want all the loot. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I ever formed a UBRS raid of 15 people. Very similar to what you saw with um, the uh, PvP bosses. Is like a rep pally would a paladin would form a 25 man raid. There would be no other paladins. Uh, well, it's his prerogative, right? He made the raid. He can design it however the fuck he wants. If he wants all the paladin loot, he can get it all. If he spent the trouble dealing with all the whispers, I didn't get that at the time. I was like, come on, man, let me in, let me in. It's so unfair, so unfair. Very young, uh, very blindsided by the truth of the matter, and just feeling shit. I felt like absolute crap. Uh, I really did. <clears throat> so I quit the game at that point. So obviously at this point I'm not very elitist, right? I'm not elitist in any fucking shape or form. In fact, I think World of Warcraft is a really shit game because I didn't do well. It's a fucking crap game. So shit. I can't believe anybody likes World of Warcraft. It's fucking shit. There's not even any PvP proper. It's all fairy cakes. You don't even take other people's loots. You can't really screw someone's life up in the game. What a pussy Care Bear game. All these kind of things what we were fighting about at the time. It's like, oh, did you play World of Warcraft? Yeah, such fucking Care Bears. What a pussy Disneyland game. Might as well play, what was the, what was always the reference? Fucking... <clears throat> Shit, like Kirby's Island Adventure or Hello Kitty Online. It's like Hello Kitty Online at World of Warcraft. Crap. You know, when you get butt hurt, you always call the name, don't you? Didn't want to anyway. You know, that kind of attitude. I don't give a shit. I don't care. <laughs> All that kind of stuff. Uh, and it's just really those sad things were going on. And then we went back to our hardcore MMO where we were killing people and res killing people while they were AFK and taking all their armor so they would log in and be devastated because your character... Was, it was as if you'd been hacked, essentially. Uh, doing stuff like that to people. Because that was hardcore. We are living the dream. <clears throat> but that game was dying. We knew that when we went back to it. The game was dying. And World of Warcraft was growing and growing and growing and growing and fucking growing. So ultimately the conversation came on then is uh, we're thinking of playing World of Warcraft together this time and the EU guys want to play with us and there's a group of I think six or seven uh, maybe even nine including a couple of the casual players from the other game who wanted to join in. At the time we were very large friends with a group of uh, Scottish guys um, and they were all playing together and stuff at weird times they, uh, they, do, they worked very late at night and they play weird times but they were good lads to say the least and we decided we would try this again i was very close friends at the time with a guy called bobs and a guy called dan and they were going to be playing the same times i was playing so it was going to be pretty cool so i re-rolled uh, they were on a different server balnazar was the server of choice and they wanted to be mage and warlock respectively and the two other guys who played with us who logged in at the same time as we all bought the game to level together they both cho chose orc warriors as such i was the no one was a healer no one was a healer whatsoever so i was like okay i'll be the priest i'll be a priest okay and they wanted to be orcs and they all wanted to start in the same area which meant i had to be a troll priest <laughs> <clears throat> a troll priest the only way i could start with them i wanted to be an undead priest i desperately wanted to be an undead priest and i couldn't do it because we couldn't start together and that decision i hated for the rest of my days uh, as being a priest it's so important picking your race it really is it's more important it's well it's not as important as picking your professions choosing your race wrong and you hate it especially the animation just ruins the gaming experience for a very long time 
I detested my troll priest. I know some people love it, that's fine. It's everybody each to their own, it's their own opinion. Uh, but I hated my troll priest. I hated the fact he had no fucking shoes. I hated his stupid lobby fucking run around while I was trying to play the game. I hated that he casted by doing this and bending over. I hated the fact that he had animated basically toenails hanging out. I hated that his tusks stuck through all the head armor I picked up. I just hated him. I absolutely hated that character. I detested it. And I had to fucking play it. Um, I desperately wanted to be an undead male. I just thought their casting animation for Horde was the best. I still do to this day. I've never seen a Horde character with better casting animation. In my opinion, I love the casting animation of male undeads. I think it's awesome. And so, Troll Priest it was. But remember, the levels were huge then. They were massive. Getting from 10 to 11 wasn't... I got to level 20 on my Monk in a couple of hours. I was getting two levels in one dungeon. Two levels in one dungeon. It was, that's not the way it rolled. So by the time I hit like level 10 and I was really starting to hate the priest, the willingness to go back and re-roll as undead was just not there. It was like, I can't. I've already got 10 whole levels on this character out of 60. Remember, this cap was 60 then. So I capped my priest eventually and I used my powers <coughs> um, of being a priest, which was a very lofty bargaining chip back then, uh, to get the guys into raid guilds. So I, I essentially wanted to be... No, I didn't want to be a priest. I didn't want to be a priest. I wanted to be a warrior. But we rolled with two warriors. Um, so I couldn't be a warrior. That was three warriors, a warlock, and a mage. That can't get anything done. <laughs> That's just useless. Um, so I played a class I didn't want to play. And I played a race I didn't want to play. So vanilla for me was overall a pretty miserable experience. I've got to be honest. Uh, vanilla overall was a pretty sad experience. Which doesn't help your ego. Because you're angry. this It's frustrating. I had to go through so much deviant fish while raiding. I just could not stand looking at my character. I couldn't stand it. So playing a priest. I learned to deal with uh, a lot of very bad situations in vanilla. Which made me a better player. Um, so it was very very difficult to complete certain instances. Like Shadow Fang Keep. I think we did that a couple of levels below the requirement. The last boss in Shadow Fang Keep was really really hard really hard with his teleporting around he was fucking difficult he was really difficult razor fen crowl uh was very difficult um in fact the dungeon i did before rage fire chasm when we first completed that i'm sure we one shot it but it wasn't that easy we had one guy who was a tank and so on and needless to say the rest uh, and the players weren't the best who I rolled with. They got better. Bob's was by far the best player, I would say, easily. Uh, the rest of them were still learning the game. Therefore, we were making tons of newbie mistakes. Loads of newbie mistakes. Hell, I couldn't tank the previous time I played the game, let alone heal this time. I mean, sure, it's easy, right? Not really. <laughs> no, I didn't know how to gear. I was just putting as much intellect stuff on. Bob's, at the time, as a warlock, uh, was expressing that he should you should be gearing up with a lot of stamina because that's how warlocks work stamina was more valuable than intellect because uh, that's how your mana came back so i was kind of like well i'm a caster so i should get a lot of stamina too right so i was wearing god knows what of the fucking monkey or the eagle or whatever it was just uh, agility gives me critical strike i think so i should get some agility on my priest you can imagine the kind of character i was playing anyway and ultimately, um, <laughs> fun story though, Scarlet Monastery around level 40, there was a staff, a healer staff. It was one of the only healer staffs until that point that was relatively good, a blue one. I still had that staff in Molten Core, <laughs> level 41. Uh, I had that staff up until I got Benediction. I had that staff and then I got Benediction. So, <clears throat> at this point, I had learned to be a better player without realizing it. By passively playing with worse players and being the only healer responsible for their health, uh, I became better at what I was doing. I learned to use my mana very efficiently because I had no mana. I was wearing fucking agility gear for Christ's sake. I know how to game. I didn't know the mechanics of the game. So I know what to do. I just didn't have the good basis to do it. So as such, I had a really horrendous character. But I still had to cope with the situations. And the other players weren't playing particularly well either. As such, from that, that was one of the pushes towards making me a better player at World of Warcraft. So ultimately, when I started getting gear, I really started to shine at this game. So we get to level 60. Uh, took a long time, like four or five weeks, maybe two months to get to level 60. And that was with playing pretty much every night. I 
got the guys into a raid guild and off we went we went raiding it was a and it was okay it's kind of fun and I bumped into a couple of guys who were long term priests and they were from the UK as well they were called Salenti and Farron Salenti and Farron and they had another friend another friend who was a resto shaman and his name was Vrez now these guys great friends of mine if you've ever seen the way of the warrior one uh, Farron is Solace the priest we played in our 3v3 team. He, I also met him in Amsterdam, along with Verez. They were real life friends, a trio of real life friends. Brilliant guys. No ego at all, I was a better player than them. And I knew it. <clears throat> I stumbled, this is another push that occurred, is I went AFK um, with my friends on Ventrilo. This is not a guild Ventrilo, this was a, a private Ventrilo amongst the friends from the previous MMO. And we've been playing for a little while now, a few months. Uh, we were getting into raiding, gear was getting better, so on. ZG was out, I think, at the time as well, so I got a couple of ZG items. and I was still using this blue level 41 staff, by the way. I'll get to the benediction story soon enough. So, I stumbled away from the comms, like I do. I went for a piss, went for something to eat. It wasn't uncommon just to go for dinner. You weren't going to get logged out in World of Warcraft, so I just went for dinner or something like that. And when I came back and put my headphones on, they were talking about me. Uh, they were talking about me. One of the... Uh, was, I don't want to say his name, uh, but I don't think he watches the show anyway. Um, I still talk to him sometimes. I will say his name for the, ver the verification of the people who know him. It's called Derek. And Derek was talking about me, and he said he felt I was the best priest on the server. And he was very good at communicating and socializing and handshaking with a lot of high-end players. Um, Derek is a DJ. In real life so super super social and likes to get to know everybody and everybody he was very much aware at that time that knowing having friends in high places got you more stuff if you were friends with the guys in the best guild in the world you would probably get invited to one of their pugs or one of their blackwing lair clearances and stuff like that so he was very much into networking and socializing and stuff which i didn't really care about i just liked playing the game at the time i wasn't interested whatsoever and he played with all the top players uh, at the time on our server uh, I think the top guild at the time was called the Harlequins which is a beautiful name actually for a guild I, th I loved the name Harlequins I thought it was a brilliant name and he said and I think I would say Preach is one of the best the best, if not the best priest on the server my ego instantly went through the roof remember at the time I was still like pubescent still like very pubescent getting on towards 20 but still trying to fuck everything that walks past me I was working in a nightclub at the time I'd recently it was the first time I'd stopped being a big fat chunker uh, and I'd started to get with a lot of girls at the time uh, for the first time in my life because I was a mega nerd uh, so the first time that I was like around about 20 I'd say maybe 19 um, girls started to become attracted to me which was really weird but again ego through the fucking roof if girls I was working in a nightclub a heavy metal nightclub at that uh, I had purple hair uh, <laughs> I had purple hair and giant pants and all that kind of shit and girls were coming up to me and trying to get with me for the first time ever which was just it was crazy to me but pff, ego explosion and then i hear this about the game and i'm like fuck yeah i'm the best in the world and there's something about a friend telling you that you're really good like generally i think you're a really really great player uh, especially if you sort of respected their opinion and i did respect Derek's opinion actually uh, especially as a pvp'er because he was vicious and brutal he was a great pvp'er and i really respected that opinion and my ego just went up and up. So I've started to be pushed now towards becoming an elitist asshole. Uh, I really am. <clears throat> then something pissed me off. And this kind of... I was thinking, When I was thinking about how to tell this story, this was one of the things that really pissed me off. And again, reinforces the idea of becoming elitist. Is when you think like this. And it was over the benediction. If you're not sure what benediction is, benediction was a class-specific quest um, reward for priests it was a staff that was in its form benediction was for healers and you could right click it and it would change to anathema which was for shadow priests which was a useless spec throughout all of vanilla uh, no one gives a shit about shadow priests whatsoever and um, so benediction was a very much sought after rare prize and how you got it was to obtain an item I believe it's called the eye I uh, give you a pick Preach, preaches purple hair. You got a pick of my preaches purple hair. Uh, yeah, yeah, very funny. <laughs> I don't think I have any pictures of my purple hair actually. Uh, I'll check once on this story. Um, 
Yeah, you got the Eye of Shadow. And the Eye of Shadow, no, there was two eyes, that's right. The Eye of Shadow came from demons in Winterspring and had to be farmed. Uh, you could buy it, you could buy it, and a lot of warlocks used to go out there because they could uh, control the demons and get hold of these eyes and then uh, sell them in the auction house. Oh, you had to go and farm it yourself. I went and farmed my Eye of Shadow um, with Bob's. See if I can drag this in for you guys. Uh, I haven't got a picture of the purple hair, unfortunately, but there's my ugly as fuck priest. Ooh, uh, disgusting! So disgusting. Uh, you can't really make it out, but this here, um, uh, his staff on his back is the benediction. If you've never seen it, I'm sure most of you have seen it. Uh, stack on the back is the benediction. Fucking ugly as sin. What a horrible character. <laughs> I detest that character so much. <laughs> Absolutely hor Oh, I hate it. Oh, I, oh, I hate it. I need to shave also. Well spotted. Um, so, we had killed, or were about to kill Major Domo Executors. So you needed the Eye of Shadow, and you also needed the Eye of Divinity. Yeah, the Eye of Divinity, someone said it there. So you had to farm the Eye of Shadow, and then you had to get a drop called the Eye of Divinity, which came from the cachet of Major Domo Executus uh, in Molten Core, which is the second to last boss. Now, the guild was progressing through Molten Core, and we were sort of getting to the point where Major Domo would be the next boss. So the priests and the hunters also needed an item out of it. Uh, there was two class quests. The hunter leaf, the hunters got a leaf out of the cachet, and the priests got the eye of divinity, and either one could drop every week. It was guaranteed that one of the two would drop, but it could be either one. So you could get a string of leafs, and therefore none of the priests would ever get benediction. Um, I was not the priest officer at that time. When I joined the guild, we started smashing through Molten Court. Nothing to do with me. Essentially, it was because I brought some good players with me who had got better at the game. And we joined a particularly average guild, but replaced four or five terrible players. And we started doing really well. So we, this was only like two weeks into Molten Core, is We're getting pretty close to killing Major Domo Executus. And... I started to think in my mind, who's getting the benediction? Now, I was way, way, way ahead of the rest of the healers. Miles ahead. Um, we would take probably five priests per raid. Uh, five healing priests, along with probably three or four resto shaman. Uh, probably one or two druids. That kind of thing. A lot of healers. That's how many you would take for a 40-man raid. Uh, about nine or ten healers. Maybe less. And... I was smashing everybody, but I was not the healing officer at the time. It was Salenti, who I had become friends with. He was a very nice guy uh, from the UK and was a good player as well. So he understood the game. And so did Perez and so did Sam. And they were very much into talking about mechanics of priest stuff and healing and stuff like that. And we were always the guys who were assigned to do the little extra tasks. Now, Ferrum was also a priest, which was Salenti's real life friend. So Salenti was a priest, Ferrum was a priest, I was a priest. And then we had a couple of others who were just garbage priests. Really, really bad. So we're getting to the point where we're about to kill Major Domo. Forum thread appears. Benediction. Who's getting it? I could not understand. I didn't even need to read the post. This is where I realise now my ego had got completely out of, out of whack. I could not possibly have fathomed why I wouldn't be the first choice for Benediction. That was the attitude. When I saw the post, I was like, oh, cool, it made a post. I'm getting my benediction. <laughs> that was my post. That was literally what I thought was going to be in this post, right? And so I, I go to the, I open the thread and it'd just be like, well, it'll be preach and then probably Salenti, the officer. I kind of figured Salenti wouldn't give it to himself first because he's the officer and he doesn't want to show favoritism for himself. At some point, it was very popular for officers not to show favoritism for themselves. Although there's a reason they're an officer, and therefore they should get that kind of loot, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, as, it, as time goes on, you sort of realise that it's a really bad idea, is to start giving out really good items to people who aren't, like, officers. So I figured in my mind that uh, Salenti wouldn't give it to himself. He probably wouldn't give it to Farron, uh, because he's his real-life friend. And so it would be me, because the other two priests suck balls, right? I mean, by process of fucking elimination, it should be me. By process of elimination. Simple as. Let alone I'm just the best as far as I'm concerned. Um, I open the thread. Fucking isn't me. 
I was so angry. I mean, genuinely fucking furious. My God, I was so, so angry. Sorry. And it was like, I can't fucking believe this. Who fucking think? Who can guess what the order of people getting benediction was? Who can fucking think was the best, the fucking person, uh, the order of people to get benediction? <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> considering what I've just said, where was I on the list? Where the fuck was I on the list? The two shitty priests? Oh, who he got it in one? The fucking officer? And I so resented him for that. I was like, you fucking prick. I can't believe you're giving it to yourself just because you're officer. How many of you guys, this is why I tell these stories. How many of you have felt that way? Just because he's a fucking officer, he deserves to get the best loot straight away. What a dick. What an arrogant cunt. Yeah, because he's the fucking officer. Of course he deserves to get it. I never understood why people questioned why some guild masters took the guaranteed drop mounts first. They run the fucking guild. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You do fuck all. You turn up to the raid. You don't do anything. You are totally replaceable. The guild master, yeah, he gets some priorities. He takes the loot himself. Uh, but yeah, the officer, the officer got it first. I was like, you fucking selfish, arrogant prick. I hate you. Just because you're the officer. I could be the officer. I could be the officer. I'm better than you. I'm better. It should go to the best player, not the officer. And then you justify it in your head of all the different reasons why it should be you. I can come up with a list endlessly of why I should get it over him. He didn't give a shit, gave it to himself. Uh, the next person to get it was Ferry, his best friend IRL, who was considerably a great player. We did 3v3, but he was slightly worse than me. And it was like, and I was third on the list, third. And then I'm thinking in my head, we're gonna get two, this is what's gonna happen, right? Because I'm getting shit on. I'm getting absolutely shit on in this situation. It's gonna be benediction number one, Salenti's gonna get it. Benediction number two is going to come. Farron's going to get it. And then it's going to be Hunter Leaf, Hunter Leaf, Hunter Leaf, Hunter Leaf. It could be months before I get my benediction. Fucking months. I was so <laughs> ultimately angry. Really angry. And then he spoke to me on Ventrilo about it. He was like, well, as the officer, I really should get it first. There's a reason I'm officer. Which, at the time, I completely disagreed with. I was like, well, isn't that like abusing your position as officer? No, it's my reward for being the officer. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it was like, uh, it was just such a weird feeling. I was so angry. And then, um, what about Farron? Yeah, well, Farron's on par with you. I was like, you cheeky bastard. Farron's on par with me. Are you crazy? He fucking was. I wasn't that much better. Farron's on par. Ugh, you make me sick. You make me physically ill. I can't understand how this could have come, this situation. Grats to Deadpool1011, who has no idea why I'm telling the story. Grats, dude. Um, and it's like, uh, the situation was so unbelievably tense amongst the priests at that time. Once this was announced, and lo and behold, the first kill of Major Domo, the Eye of Divinity drops. And I'm like, grats, Salenti. Grats. Good luck to you. <sighs> and then, um, of course, next week, the Eye of Divinity dropped again and Farron got it. Hilariously enough, Salenti couldn't finish the quest on his own. The next week, he turned up to Molten Core and he didn't have the benediction. And I was like, why have you not got the staff? Oh, um, no other reason. He failed it multiple times. He failed the quest. Uh, the quest at the time, if you've never done the benediction quest, it was really hard. Uh, you had to collect a lot of consumables to do it, including these potions, immolation aura potions. A priest had to solo it. Uh, only priests could see the mobs only priests who were on the quest could see the mobs and you had to kill a series of undead mobs quite a lot of them um that would come pouring in the plague lands in the eastern plague lands it was a quite a difficult quest and uh, to say to tell you the truth you had to get a lot of these immolation potions because they were like lots and lots of mobs and priests at the time had no aoe whatsoever we didn't have fucking mind seer or holding over <laughs> we didn't have any of that shit um and so off off we went and next week he turned up without benediction and he just went yeah i tried it a couple of times but i thought i'd just wait to see if Farron got it because multiple priests who were on the same quest could do it together because you could both see the mobs and you both got the quest credit so he's and then Farron did get the eye of divinity 
And off they went immediately after the raid and la 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 started linking their benedictions. We got the benediction, we got the benediction. I was like, you pair of wankers. You absolute pair of wankers. It's fucking terrible. And <laughs> it was, I was infuriated. Genuinely infuriated. I felt so insulted that me was not getting this thing. This was the guy who was being chased by... I, at that time, I should point out, these other factors that push you towards believing this are not only RL factors, such as my age and that I have working in a place like I did, uh, but also I was getting asked by a lot of higher level guilds to join them. Uh, Blackwing Lair was out and about, and people were struggling with Blackwing Lair. And I was getting asked to join other guilds on a regular basis. But I felt some sort of loyalty that many of you will feel to, towards even mid-level casual guilds. Uh, there were a lot of brilliant people in the... Uh, the Berserkers was the name of the guild. The Berserkers. Uh, there were a lot of really, really fantastic people in that guild. Uh, who I still have on sort of social networks today, like Facebook and so on. Um, hilariously funny people. And I enjoyed my time there. I did. Besides this particular moment. I also felt I was the best healer. Not only the best priest. The best healer. And therefore I was comfortable. I was kicking ass. I was taking names. I was being an absolute boss. Why would I want to leave that? I was in line to get the benediction very very soon. The other guilds weren't even raiding Molten Core. They were taking their alts and stuff. Um, so it made no sense for me to leave. I had a great amount of people. I had a lot of respect from bad players. Um, a lot of respect from bad players who thought I was a god because I could beat the other bad healers at healing. Uh, I was also starting to learn raid leading. And other than Salenti being the officer, I was probably next in line to be officer. If uh, I think he uh, joined like a day or so before me. And that was the only reason he got the officer over me. Uh, that's, I was also insulted by that. I, of course, should be officer. Therefore, I can give myself benediction. <laughs> and um, it continued like that. It was pretty cool. So the next week, the Eye of Divinity dropped. I didn't have to wait weeks and weeks for it. I, the benediction thing dropped. And I, I soloed that quest. First time. Um, I got a... Um, I read a lot of guides. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to be mega egotistical about this. I, I read the guides. I collected all the consumables. I knew what I had to do. And I one-shot it. And I really rubbed it in Salenti and Farron's face. As you did it together. And they didn't care. They were best friends. They were like, mm, so what? We don't give a shit. Um, yeah, I didn't want to farm. They were just like, well, we didn't want to farm all the consumables. We just did it together. If, I mean, if I would have had to wait another week, I would have done it. That didn't mean shit to me. I was like, no, you didn't do it because you couldn't do it. I did it because I own. You suck. That is the rules. Preach forever. All that kind of shit. You know, just reinforce it. Again, it's just a little moment that occurred that just adds to the ego all these little things build up to become a complete elitist moron and this was another one of those fucking memes yeah pre-2012 Woo! i don't know uh so onwards with the story where was i sorry i was distracted um it got to the stage where... Oh, this is what happened next. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted by my story. So, yeah. Preach 2012. Bringing it on. Uh, well, Preach 2004 or whatever it was. 2006. Uh, <laughs> was kicking ass, taking names. And I sold the quest. I was so proud of myself, genuinely. I was like, of course... And then afterwards, I was like, of course I sold the quest. I'm Preach, right? Of course I sold the quest. Fucking check me out on my troll with the shittiest fucking staff in the game. The benediction is... Uh, and then someone called the benediction a pizza spoon um, for the sake of again of people who know this um, his name was Balthazar for anybody who remembers him his name was Balthazar um, he called it a pizza shovel that was right he was German and he couldn't he couldn't think of the name for the pizza scooper thingy so he called it a pizza shovel he was like oh look at preach with his pizza shovel and he just tore into me for about 20 minutes i was genuinely very upset by it <laughs> i was genuinely very upset how could you call a benediction don't you know i soloed this quest are you mad why are you calling it a pizza shovel <laughs> totally uh i was like i can't fucking believe this <laughs> i can't believe you were called my benediction i worked so hard for this i had to farm immolation potions and farming potions was a big fucking deal at the time we didn't use potions in raids are you mad uh or flasks or anything like that fuck, fuck no farming consumables was like hardcore seriously hardcore 
And so, yeah, he's calling my benediction a pizza shovel. Obviously, I kind of laughed along with him. He was one of the funniest people in the guild. He was always drunk and a brilliant DPS warrior as well. And he was permanently drunk, absolutely permanently drunk. Uh, every time he raided, he was hammered and had a great time doing it as well. And he could afford to be hammered in a 40 man raid. It didn't matter if he died, no one gave a shit. He generally won the DPS anyway, so no one cared. Uh, yeah, he's calling it a pizza spoon and pizza shovel and all that kind of stuff. It was great times. And um, so a week later, Salenti left the guild. Motherfucker. Cheeky, robbing bastard. I fucking hated him so much. He left the guild for the best guild on the server a week after getting his benediction. The week I got my benediction, he left the fucking guild. I was like, you robbing bastard. Of course he had been the priest for... Well, no. Now that I think about it. Uh, he was like... Uh... Uh, bear with me a sec. Um, it was like... Um, at the time, he didn't realise things like... Uh, even now, I think back, he wasn't in the guild that long, but he had done more than anybody else to deserve the benediction, okay? He had done more than anybody else to deserve the benediction. And so I can't really complain at that in that respect I can't really complain at that uh, he totally fucking deserved it uh, I'm trying to do something very very quickly uh, and it's really annoying me I'm trying to tell a story here you know Okay, done. Awesome. <clears throat> Genji should have uh, banning privileges now. Okay, so he obviously got to the. Uh, he left. I and but Fair and Verez, remember this trio of good friends. They didn't leave. Fair and Verez stuck around. It was just Salenti who left. He was the official leader of that group, I would say, in social aspects. He was the alpha of that trio. I think that's fair to say. Even to those guys, if they ever watch this, they they would agree. He was the alpha of that team. And he obviously is considering World of Warcraft at the time and being very good at World of Warcraft were quite a respectable thing among nerds. Uh, he was the better priest, out of, uh, the better healer out of all of them. So Salenti left. He got his benediction a week later he left. And it was like... Um, I felt very betrayed. At the time I didn't understand things like, well he deserved it. He earned that loot. He earned it. So of course he can do whatever the fuck he wants with it it's always shitty if you get some sort of special item that's quite difficult for the guild to get which benediction isn't by the way it doesn't qualify because it's probably guaranteed to drop every week we deleted tons of eyes of divinity nobody could get it we were bringing alts in after a few weeks uh, it was more than in, there was plenty of them to go around it was not a rare item to get by any means if you were killing that boss um but i felt so angry i was like you fucker you, uh, uh, i was fuming i was generally fuming i, was, I felt so personally insulted why had he not consulted me with this thing? And I, uh, it got, it, and this is, you know, I feel really bad now that I was like that. I do. I generally feel shitty. Uh, but again, these are things that might happen to you. If people are constantly telling you you're great, you're good, and you're in an average to bet to decent guild. That doesn't mean a whole fucking lot. Uh, it doesn't mean a lot in a good guild. Nobody should ever think they're better than other people. It just conflicts. It just creates a huge conflicting problem. So he left, he'd gone, the officer spot was open, and instantly I was promoted. I was basically raid leading at the time, and that sort of story kind of carries on in its own way in story time number two about raid leading the guild and the things I did then. Uh, but I want to look at it from this other perspective, which is the pushes and the shoves into various other directions. And so <clears throat> I felt, um, I certainly felt like once I got promoted, I kicked a couple of people straight away. I was like, fuck off. Uh, just leave the fucking guild. You shit, you bad. I don't know why Slenty ever kept you around. I ultimately ended up re-inviting both of them because the reason Slenty wasn't kicking them is, quite frankly, we had no other priests and we needed them. Uh, priests were the best healers at the time. They were just insurmountably better. Uh, and therefore, it was difficult to deal with that situation. So I was now the raid leader uh, and the officer and then ultimately the guild master of that guild. I then started to really throw my weight around. <laughs> um, I left that guild shortly after. Again, this is part of story time too. 
Uh, Varez left the week later. These were there was a core cool bunch of about seven really good players in that guild. Uh, those three being three of them. Duh. Um, another guy called Nups, who was a mage. Knups began with a K. Uh, Balthazar, I would say, and one or two others. And they all started to filter off very quickly after Salenti left. They remember, this was the time when poaching from the bottom feeding guilds was the standard practice. There was no such thing as cross-realm transfers. You couldn't recruit people from different realms or anything like that. They had to come from your own server base. Therefore, if one of the members of the top 40-man raiding guilds left, they would just grab someone who was the best geared from somebody below them and bring them up into the fold. It was especially around the time Arn Courage was coming. Um, I think this was two or three weeks maybe before Anchorage came out or maybe a little bit longer um, before the patch anyway they, would, they weren't doing Anchorage because then they started telling they started smugly sending me messages this was another push uh, towards this this entire feeling that I was getting to, to the peak of elitist assholeism, which was around this time another push was they started sending me messages because Nups left the week later the mage and then he joined uh, the same guild who was farming Blackwing Lair. And then Varez left shortly after the Shaman. So Farron stuck with me. Out of this trio, Farron stuck with me. But we'd lost our mage officer, who was tremendously good. Nups was one of the best mages I ever played with. Uh, he might be terrible now. Vanilla was a much easier time to be better. He might be terrible now if he still plays the game. Uh, but I, at the time, he was considered one of the best. So Nups left, Varez left, and Salenti had left for the best guild. And I felt like I was the best player... And now I was in the shittest situation. My best players are leaving around me. How many of you send me messages saying the best people have left our guild, should I leave? I was still in the mode of, I will stick this out till the end. Especially as I was vying to become the guild master. Uh, which is the other story in story time too. So, <laughs> I've lost my best players. I was. This is where I started thinking I should leave. But at the same time, I've got a plan in operations to become the guild master of this guild. Which is what I ultimately wanted. But at the same time, I haven't really got enough great players in order to warrant me doing that. So where the hell does this leave me? Very tricky, very confusing time, very frustrating. And then they started sending me snotty messages. I would whisper them, because uh, they were on my friends list. You know, how's it going? And they're like, oh, well... Um, oh, we didn't have a mage. That was right. Nups left, and then the other mages stopped logging in. So I whispered him something like, oh, we have no mages. Can you come and make us water? Ha, ha, ha. And he said, oh, yeah, just have to pop up to Blackwing Lair. And I was like, you cheeky bastard. I was like, you fucker. And we were doing a Nixia. I can remember this whisper. We were doing an Nixia run, and we had no mages. So I whispered him saying, we've got no mages. You've left. We've got no mages. Can you make us some water? Ha, ha, ha. And he said, yeah, just pop up to Blackwing Lair. And I was like, you wanker uh, fucking. and you've all done this you've all been in these situations where you know if you haven't it'll probably happen to you at some point is that the best players start leaving around you and if you're of the opinion you are the best player this really pisses you off because now worse players are doing better things than you are you're stuck wiping on Enixia because your best players have left and you're the best player and they're killing fucking Nefarian they're killing Nefarian, you're wiping on Anixia, you're a better player. Another push. It's another push towards the elitism and the segregation of everybody else. Everybody else is fucking terrible. Because I should be defeating this content. I should be doing it. And then that classic saying I bet you've all heard, or thought, if you've ever been in this position, if you haven't, you might not have thought this. But if you have ever thought this, you know what I'm talking about. I wish I could play every character in the raid. I wish I could play every character in the raid. I seriously would. I seriously would. Have you ever fucking thought that? Am I right? <laughs> Somebody has, everybody has thought that at some point. You are all so bad that if I could play every fucking character, I would smash this place to pieces. I'm not even joking. I would cut this boss in two. I would destroy it easily because I am that damn good. I want to play every character. And it's so arrogant and it's so wrong. <laughs> it's so wrong. It really is one of the most idiotic things you can possibly think. To think you are just that good that I could play any class. I'll play your rogue. I'll play your mage. I'll play your warlock. I'll play your tank. I'll play every single fucking character here and I'll destroy this content. 
absolutely abysmal level of thinking. And this is the frustration I was in at the time, which is just not helping. These guys cannot kill Anixia. They couldn't do it. We wiped nightly on Anixia. After farming it, we've been farming Anixia for ages. Not only that, I had never had the Halo Transcendence drop in something like... Uh, I killed Anixia in vanilla, probably something along... I don't know 30 32 times i never got the halo transcendence never never got it it dropped twice salenti and Farron got theirs i didn't get it ever i never had the dkp for it i think even a it might have even dropped another time and i had just bought something with my dkp dkp who remembers fucking dkp <laughs> holy shit fucking dkp oh my god dkp yeah i just been out and bought DK, dragon kill points. If you don't know what DKP stands for, it's dragon kill points. Um, fucking DKP. My god. DKP was a currency, a fictional currency that was only relevant in your guild, and you got you earned DKP for depending on your guild. Uh, for us, it was showing up on time, staying till the end of the raid, um, and not fucking up. I think you got you used to lose DKP if you were majorly scrubbish. Uh, and you would earn these points every week and somebody would have to update the website and then you would have points that you could spend on gear so an item would drop and you'd say i will spend 40 of my dkp on the item and then somebody else would go well i'll spend 45 and i'll spend 50 45 and a bidding war used to go on you used to see the item linked bid and the numbers would paste in um fucking crackers i can't believe else <laughs> i can't even remember that um adverts i'm not playing any adverts by the way so if adverts are coming up um, oh. No, DKP was terrible. DKP promoted all sorts of cheesing and cheating. Uh, DKP was awful. Uh, I was so happy when we stopped using DKP. DKP could be abused in so many ways, but we're going off topic. Uh, so I never got a Halo Transcendence. So now I'm on a boss that I was farming a week ago. We now can't kill it. My friends who I consider worse than me are now raiding content better than what I am and getting significantly better loot anyway. I can't get my fucking helm because these guys can't kill it. And I'm also thinking of leaving the guild at the same time I think I'm becoming GM. At the same time, I'm fucking hormonal as shit because I'm fucking that age. And it's just all going pear-shaped. And my mind is like a fucking explosion. It's like an ant farm of ideas all running backwards and forwards, rolling giant turds around the place trying to get something done. Absolute bag of shit at the time. And also, I was stoned constantly during that period of my life. Absolutely stoned, and I don't recommend it to anybody. When I stopped smoking weed, it was a brilliant decision. Uh, so being absolutely wrecked at the time didn't help, because I would be like this. I would sum all that emotion, all this conflict, all this sort of rage going on in my head, like this. <sighs> and get really dry lips. That was what I would do. <laughs> uh, it would just be that would just sum it all up like that, and just be like on my keyboard, like, "Oh man, <laughs> it's terrible." Um, so it was it was a weird time, and then I became GM, and then I left the guild a week after being GM and killed the guild. I killed that guild. I like, successfully put the nail in the coffin of that guild, and that full story again is on story time two of how I did that. So now I was looking for another guild. <clears throat> another push towards the ego thing is I was able to negotiate with not the best guild in the server, the way I, Perez and Salenti were, and then ultimately Farron. When I left the Berserkers, and they were left without a GM or a raid leader, they broke up. Uh, Farron just instantly got invited to the best guild on the server. Great. I couldn't get into them. <laughs> this didn't help. They were full-on priests. Of course they were. They'd just taken Salenti and Farron in the last two weeks. They had two new priests. They were full. And I spoke to Salenti, and he had no authority whatsoever in that guild. And he said, I'm sorry, I'm going to bring Farron. He's my best friend. Of course I'm going to bring him along. I want to raid with him. Um, I want to raid with you too, but he's my best friend IRL. What are you going to do? It's like me picking between someone I know and Ghost. I'm bringing Ghost. Well, maybe not Ghost because he's an asshole, but... And he tends to cause me a lot of problems in guilds when we raid together. Yeah, probably not Ghost. I'll pick somebody else. But that's a bad example. Uh, but somebody else <clears throat> who I like, that would be a good plan. And <laughs> I'm now negotiating with the second best guild to bring my friends with me, which were Bob's, who was still playing, Dan had quit, and a couple of Warriors, uh, to get them into their guild. And they didn't need Warriors, and they didn't need fucking Warlocks. They didn't need them. Warlocks were terrible. They were awful. They were there to debuff the boss for the mages. As long as they brought Curse of Elements, then your one Warlock was welcome and make Hellstones for everybody. That was what your Warlock's job was back then. Warlocks were awful. 
uh, especially when they removed negative resists, then they were really shit. <laughs> so um, I was negotiating to get them into the raid, and as a priest, the server was so desperate for priests, besides the best guild, uh, I got them in. Which again is more ego, I was like, well, and this guy, the, the GM of this guild, Mortimus, uh, was basically saying to me, hey, we just want you, do you, the other guys have to join as well? And I was just like, yeah. And I was PvPing at the time, I so didn't care. I just knew he would have to say yes. I knew I had him by the bollocks. I was the next best thing to anybody on the server. I was the highest geared and I was available. Everybody else would go to the Harlequins and he wanted to beat the Harlequins because he used to be friends with them. He used to be part of their guild and they kicked him. So he had a vendetta, a personal vendetta with those people. And this was again, another push. When people, if you give people too much power in negotiation, they have too much power over you and you will lose every time and their ego will be inflated and you can guarantee the next time you talk to them, they will talk to you with that ego because they've beaten you once and you've given them that freedom to be like that. You have to be tough as a raid leader. You have to be tough as a guild master. Today, if someone approached me and I needed a priest and he was like, well, I want to bring these, I will join if you bring these classes with me. I'm telling him to fuck off. I'm not fucking care. I'm not putting myself in that situation. I'm not giving you that authority. I'm not doing it. As the raid leader and the guild master, I need to retain some authority. It's still a game, but I need to retain some authority. Or my role is completely useless. And by giving random members a lot of authority, you should, they should have some. And everybody should have their say. But if you want people to follow your leadership, you can't just give everybody the right of way to do what they please. If someone just says, oh, I'm, I'm going for dinner now in the middle of the raid in AFKs. And you're like, okay, uh, guess what? Your raid isn't going to follow you for very long. And if you give people too much power, they will start taking the piss. They will turn up late. Well, you have to, you need me. I could have turned up late to any of those raids in the new guild. Wouldn't have mattered. They still needed me. They needed me. They needed the priest. They would remove one of their members to fit me in. Easily. It would happen. And, you know, I was totally aware of that. Therefore, I was just smug. Again, it's another push. You gain too much freedom, you end up an asshole. <sighs> That's the end of the story. Those are some of the things. Very tiny pushes. A long history there of very little things. Tiny things. Comments from other people. Hearing someone talk about you. Giving you a little bit of authority. Being okay in a bad guild. I think the main one you've got to take away is that being good in a bad guild doesn't mean shit. Because ultimately I ended up playing with players who were at the highest level of their game and they shit all over me. And I had to learn all over again and I became very humbled. And being humbled is a brilliant thing. Being humbled helps you get better. Uh, but there's lots of little things that can happen, especially in the chaos that is the mid-level guilds. The mid-level guilds are very chaotic. There are people going left and right. There's not much dedication or loyalty anymore into a guild. There's a few core members who are very loyal and then the rest really aren't. And that whole mishmash of good to uh, average, bad, bad to average players just move around and they mill around this area. And occasionally one of them starts to rise uh, and comes up, up and then hopefully they get humbled and then they understand what's going on in the top end play. That's a good thing. Uh, but the mid levels to the low levels especially are really chaotic, jumping guilds left and right. And then becoming good in one of those guilds can give you a lot of false ego. A lot of false ego. Because ultimately I was not a brilliant, brilliant priest. It was pretty good. I was pretty good. I'd never faced a challenge that had really, that would really make me think I was very, very good. Um, I certainly, I was in a mid-level guild. I was killing Anixia and then ultimately Nefarian and Blackwing Lair. Then Ankaraj and then on to Nax Ramis. And I did fine in Nax. Um, but I would, nah. Um, I can't say I ever faced anything where I could say I did tru something truly special. Uh, to warrant getting any sort of praise. And I certainly wasn't on a world contendership level. I did not warrant the ego that I picked up. But I, in a way, it almost isn't your fault. If you keep getting pushed into that area and you get the things that you need from that which sort of reinforce this false ideology of yourself, uh, you end up in a fucking mess. You end up really, really egotistical unnecessarily. Uh, being egotistical is never necessary, as you point out. Uh, an arrogance that is not deserved but given to you an arrogance that is definitely given to you and you need to be very careful about keeping your ass in check all the time I think so anyway uh, that's 
a long ass daily. I'm making you lag. <laughs> I'm making you lag. <sighs> wow, some fucking tryhards, man. Look at all these tryhards. Liam's trying too hard. Too many tryhards. Any questions before we go? Any questions before we go? I could do with modding some of you, couldn't I? Mr. Delore, you should be able to now ban people and so on and so forth. Always happens when the stream's pretty good. <laughs> Mod fan. <laughs> Mr. Delore is a moderator. You might need to, yeah, I typed that. Uh, you might need to relog. All right, well, for the sake of the length of the stream, I'm going to uh, play the ending now, and I will take the questions afterwards. So that's pretty long. All right, so have a good day, boys. I hope you enjoyed story time, and have a great weekend, as always. Please enjoy your weekends. It's important.